Hello, hello, this is Blaster Toad here, and welcome back to the Spline Constrained Platformer Tutorial Series. This will be part two, where we are making an animation blueprint. So, um, first we're gonna need a character to animate. Well, I've got a little guy sitting around in one of my old... Er, that was meant for, actually, the first time I was doing a, um platformer series tutorial. So we are going to get my nuts and guts guy over here. We're going to, in Unreal Engine, make yet another new folder. I'm going to call this Mesh. And then within here we're going to make a new folder for Nuts is his name. Perfect. And this, for um, many of you, this is not going to be something you can really follow along with because you won't have assets or access to the assets, but you could bring in your own character and its animations. Um, however, for anybody who is a um, patron of mine um, over at patreon.com forward slash toad forward slash yeah whatever slash toad net um the link is also in the description below for the starting tier of one dollar a month you not only get early access to the videos but you also get all of the project files so you could follow along okay i'm gonna bring these in so when you are importing animations separate from your character, I want to make sure you uncheck Skeletal Mesh. No, no, sorry, not Skeletal Mesh. You want to uncheck Import Mesh. And do 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 do. Okay, import all those. So I should now have my materials my animations and my guy. So I'm gonna make a couple new folders here. Materials. And another new folder. Animations. So let's take all of our animations and our pose. And take that to animations, move here, perfect. And then all of my materials move in here. And then file, save all. And then content, fix up redirectors, and under nuts, fix up redirectors, just and then save all again, just in case any of those movements broke any linkages. Okay. So, let's go over to our player. And um, get rid of this here print string now, what I left in from the last video. This is on the event tick, set after location. I'm getting rid of that. And do do do. Yeah. I'm going to go to their viewport. I'm going to delete our box. I'm going to select mesh. And then under skeletal mesh, select nuts. And then W to get my transform widget. Boom down. And E to get my rotate widget. Boom the rotation. Compile and save, and then now we've got the Weed Nuts robot sliding about on the ground. Let's make him actually run. Okay. So, to do that, we are going to go back to our mesh under animations, and we are going to do a new animation blueprint. Animation blueprint, right there. We have to select our skeleton. There we are. I'm selecting the nut skeleton. And I'm gonna call this Anim. Oop, get my caps locks off. 
Adam BP underscore nuts. And I'm also going to control scroll to make those a little bit smaller. And then I am going to right click again, animation. This time I want a blend space 1D for my nut skeleton. I'm gonna call this a BS for blend space underscore walk run. Okay, and we're gonna open up that blend space. So blend space lets you drive an animation based on a float. And the float is zero to 100 by default. And what we're gonna do is because dismiss almost never works on these plugins things, I'm gonna hit manage plugins. I'm then going to close the plugins window to get rid of that. I want to get my static pose and um, pull my static pose out to my zero position. And we'll see nuts now locks into a static pose there. I then want to get my walking animation and drag it in mm, maybe halfway, sure. And now as I go, he takes the cutest itsy bitsy little steps until he gets to the full walking animation. And then I am going to take my, um, I had this misnamed, so nuts action is my running and put it right down at the end. So then if I start coming out here, his hands get a little janky, but then he goes into his full on run. Yay. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go. So we're going to save that. Minimize and open up our Anim BP. Okay. So it's going to open up to the animation graph, which we don't actually want yet. We're going to go get some variables first. So on the event graph, we are going to get um, try get owner pawn. And we are going to cast to character player. <clears throat> and if that is true, we are going to remote variable player. I don't want to be doing a cast every time though. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to get player, do an is valid, which is cheaper than the cast by a fair amount, plug that on in, and then if the if player is not valid, then we want to do our cast and get a player. Nice, just like that. After that, we want to off our player, get velocity. From velocity, we are going to get length. Um, sorry, not get length, just length, and we want vector length. Then from our player, we are also going to do um, movement. And we're gonna scroll down and get character movement. And from there we want max walk speed. Okay. And we want to divide vector length divided by max walk speed. This is gonna give us as a percentage how much, um, how close we are to our max walk speed. But it's gonna give it uh, to us as a zero to one. So 0.5 being 50%, right? So what we want to do then is because our blend space goes from zero to 100, we want to multiply float by float 100. And then we're going to right click, promote to variable and call this speed. And we're gonna plug is valid into speed.
Okay. Highlight all that. C. Calculate speed as percentage of max speed. That's what that's doing. And we're gonna move that comment down. We're gonna move our cast kind of out of the way there. Next, we want to get our player again. Do is falling. And then we'll promote this to a variable. And we'll call this falling. And straighten that off. Compile and save. And then we're gonna do something else. We're gonna go to our player, character player. We're gonna go to our input graph. And where we have them jump, we're gonna do a new variable. We're gonna call it jumping. And we are going to make that a Boolean. And whenever we jump, which we'll do a few times in the next video as we do double jump and we do, we'll do a wall jump as well. So when we jump, we want to set is jumping to true. Okay, so now if we go back to our anim blueprint, so we've got falling, and we'll just straighten that all up. Comment, get is falling. And then off our player, we also want to get jumping. So player get jumping. Now we want to promote to variable jumping. And straighten. Straighten that off, straighten that off. And we're gonna do C, get jumping. Just make it all pretty like here. Compile and save. And there we go. And now we can go to our anim graph. So off our output, output pose, we're gonna want to put into it a state machine. Add new state machine. And this is gonna switch between different animations for us. I'm gonna plug that in there and then double click our state machine. When we come into our state machine, we are gonna need a new state. This new state will be walking. Then coming from that, we're gonna need another new state. So add state, jumping. Then we're gonna need a new state off that. Falling. And unlike the blueprint nodes that you're used to, you'll see that these are directional. They have arrows in which way they can travel. But right now, if I go to walking, or from walking to jumping, I can never go back to walking. Mm-hmm. So then falling, we want to come over here. And then um, we also want to go up to falling. And we want to go from falling to jumping. Okay. And then these little bits are telling us how we get to those bits, to these different states. So to go from walking to jumping, are we going to get there? Well, we're going to get there when jumping is true. We're just going to plug jumping right in there and go back. When we want to go from jumping to falling, I'm gonna double click there. We're gonna go there when 
Falling is true. And jumping is not true. Compile and save. Okay. And then we'll go back from falling to... Actually, no, we're never going to go back from falling to jumping. Or are we? Yes, we are. We're going to go back to falling. And when jumping is true. So if we're in falling, we'll go back to jumping if jumping is true. We'll go from falling to wet walking when falling is not true. And we'll go from walking to falling when falling is true and jumping is not true. I'm just setting up these little rules to go in between each one. Q will automatically straighten two nodes to each other. Handy little thing, and then we're gonna go back. So now that we've got that all set up, let's go into walking. The walking right now is going to do nothing for us. So what we want to do is we want to um, do a blend space. Blend space. If I could spell properly. And then right there we've got blend space BS walk run. We want that. We're going to plug that in. You'll see he lost his position. And then we want to put in speed. We're gonna straighten that and compile and save. And now if we're to go out here and play, he's locked in place, but, and then he still does nothing. Why? Why are you doing that nuts? And go back to our animation blueprint. And we go back, we're gonna go back. So that's plugged in. Entry goes to walking. Walking will get the speed out, and speed, if we bring it up, yep, speed is driving that blend space. Oh, it's not on our animation blueprint. We go to our player, and we go to our character, go back to our viewport and select our mesh. We have to tell it. Use animation blueprint. Which one? Which anim class? Well, we need to choose anim BP nuts. And then play. Now. Hello, secondary nuts out in the world. Why is there another one of you? Huh. But now we are moving. I have no idea why there's another one. And our feet are sliding a little bit. So I am going to, if we go back to our animation blueprint, we go back to our walking state. So again, we're going into our state machine, going into walking, selecting that BS walk run. I want to set play rate to 1.5. And then compile, save. Now the feet should not look like they're sliding on the ground. There we go. We gotta fix our camera up a little bit for when it loops around, but yeah. Um, we never set jumping default, so it never goes back to walking, but we'll fix that in a second. Yeah, apparently at some point I dragged out a nuts. Ah, cool. Anyway, now we're gonna go back to our animations, and we're gonna set up an animation notify. Let's go to our animation jump. There we go. And what we want to do is at the end of the jump here, we're going to right click, 
add notify, new notify. I'm going to say that, call this jump anim end. I'm going to save. And now if we go back to our animation blueprint, we get out of here and we go to our event graph actually. We're going to, in our event graph, do jump anim end. So we have event anim notify, jump anim end. We want to get our player, set jumping to false. And that's how we are going to stop jumping is when the animation ends. And now if we go to our anim graph, new state machine jumping we want to put in here jump play anim nuts jump there we go and if i remember correctly this animation's a little messed up um or just not fast enough yeah see it looks like he's jumping in midair so what we want to do for him there is if I go back to my anim blueprint on this I'm gonna make it play twice as fast one but play rate I want play rate of two and then start position of 0.3 so it starts already in there and I think with those values my jump looks better Okay, let's try start position of 0.5. And this is just going to be tuning it for my animation. I think that looks okay. That what's screwing it is it's going back to the basic state. What we want to do is go into our anim blueprint. And then for falling. Come on, falling. We want to do, um, oh, what did I call it? Land, I called it land. Anim nuts land is my fall loop. So now we should see nuts jump. So we can run and then when we jump and then we go to the falling animation, jump, fall, jump, fall, jump, fall. There we go. Doesn't look very good in place. Oh, and of course, I got stuck in a spot where I'm jumping over that, so I'm not in one or the other. So um, these trigger boxes would have to be taller to catch him in that area. But um, we might we might write in a a thing on that. Yeah, we might write in a thing on that. Okay, and then... Anim Nuts Idle... Let's set up his idle animation. So, we're gonna have a new state. Add state. And we're gonna call this idle. And then idle is gonna go into walking. How is idle going to get into walking? Well, we're going to get this and we're going to say speed is greater than or equal to 0.1. So if we're moving fast, it'll go into there. And let's go into our idle. And we're gonna pull it off here and we're gonna type in a random, random sequence player. There we go. And then I want to add a few items in here. One, two, three, I do believe. And I'll choose sequence one is my nuts idle. Sequence two is nuts idle hand. Sequence three, nuts idle head. But it will randomly 
play one of those. So you should now see Nuts moving around in the corner there. Doing random things from his idle animation set. Um, the other thing we want to do here then is... We want a new variable. We want to call this idle. Idling. Can idle. Can idle. We're going to set can get can idle and set can idle. And how are we going to do this? We are going to do this with a get speed is greater than or equal 0.1 we'll set idle to false and then we'll do a re-triggerable delay promote that to a variable and we'll call this idle delay and then when idle delay is done, we're going to control C, control V, set idle to true. Okay, and we're going to straighten this off, straighten this off. Okay. And we're going to comment this, the return to idle after time elapsed. There we go. Now if we go back to our state machine, we want to be able to come from walking to idle, but we only want to do that if can idle is true. Okay, compile save, and we're gonna hit idle delay. I'm gonna set idle delay to something like mm, two seconds. Then you gotta hit this little apply down here, compile, save. So now when we play the game, nut starts idling. But then if we move, He's no longer idling, and if we stop, he's not idling until two seconds is up, and then he'll start doing his idles and fidgets again. Look at the fidgy little bugger. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, run that backwards, because we don't have the camera rotating with you yet. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, now how... Well, I guess actually that's it for this video, because we're just setting up the idle animation. So in the next video, we are going to set up the double jump and the wall jump. Why not? That's what we'll do in the next video. So we'll see you then. Um, again, for anybody wanting access to the project files, starting at just $1 a month on Patreon, you get access to early, or you get early access to the videos. So you'll get to watch them a week to two, just depending on the backlog ahead of everybody on YouTube. And then, the other thing you get is access to all the project files. Okay, for a little bit more, there's also a priority Discord for anybody who needs help and needs an answer right away. I get to those really quickly. And at a at the top tier there, you can actually purchase um, tutorial time with me, like one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, based around helping you solve a specific problem or design a specific system up to four hours a month. So, um, yeah, if you want to support me and get a few nice little benefits like the Priority Discord or the one-on-one -on -one tutoring, 
just visit me over at, um, or visit Patreon over at patreon.com slash toadnet. The link is in the description. And, um, yeah. We'll see you next time for the next video here. And if you're having any questions, you can always also post in the standard Discord. And I will get to it when I can. So, um, bye for now.